I sat down with elite breaststroker and Olympic trials A finalist, Ben Kono, to share his secrets on how to become a world-class breaststroker. In this episode, we cover everything from starts and turns, to the mechanics of elite breaststrokers like Adam Petey versus Ben's stroke, and we get into Ben's favorite drills that made him a Masters National Champion. And Ben is more than qualified to tell you all about it. With a career best time in the 100 yard breaststroke of a 51.5 and a long course 100 breaststroke of a 100, he's got speed and power. He's gonna tell you all about how to become a faster breaststroker and how he's doing it while working a full-time job while training for the 2024 Olympic trials. Make sure to stick around until the end to hear Ben's tips for all breaststrokers. And without further ado, let's dive in to Ben's breaststroke. While swimmers focus so much on technique, races are won and lost on the starts, turns, and finishes of the race. It's all about getting those extra hundreds of a second that can lead to major improvements and massive time drops. Here's what Ben thinks about on his starts, turns, and finishes, and how you can replicate it. I know that my biggest focus is the way you set your stroke tempo is that first stroke. The breakout is the first full flesh of a press stroke because that's going to dictate how high you are in the water for at least the next six strokes. So I think getting a really good hit as you surge up from this ocean, this kit, as our pull, but not lust. And so I think that that's, that's helped me getting into that first stroke. When that first stroke hits perfectly, it's all that new from that and you it. off it. I think it's hard. Um, one of the important things is getting a good quick breath. I think there's a lot of mechanic things that I personally don't find myself qualified at the spot on, but I do think that getting a good breath in and making sure it's a quick breath and not negating yourself from having the breath at all. If you're going to need to go back underwater, especially in a hundred breaths all course, you're going to be, you're getting your heart rate jacked up that first 50, especially if you're attacking it, you're getting your heart rate jacked up and then you're holding your breath and just going like stagnant underwater and your heart rate's pumping your blood's moving around you're getting tired underwater and so i think the more air you can get in on that turn the better you're going to be as you surge back up into it and you can get your stroke rate more consistent going into the second 50. um I always try to get a good breath trying to be as fast as i can trying to be as efficient as i can but but i think that trying to make sure you could sneak a good breath and not just not breathing off the wall or something like that to make sure that it's quicker because you're gonna die out if you're not taking a breath on that wall. I have trained with some swimmers before that don't take a breath on the wall and, and they tend to die out in that last bit. So I think it's helpful to get that breath in. Um, and I think for finishing, just keep that head down. A lot of people wanna lift their head like I was saying earlier. If you keep pushing that head down, press in the chest and it needs and then cool where you're rolling. Um, it had to race out just like that. And so uh, I've had a lot of nail biter finishes. I've had I've had a I had a rival in high school and it very, very, very kind of racist weekend. We were hundreds off each other, we we're tie each other. And I had the same deal in college. And um more likely than not, I came out on top of those races in the funder breast. I can't speak for two funder, but um I think one of the things that helped me was just making sure I've, you know, finding myself before the race. I'm not someone that warms up. And the blue, I wore off initially, and then 30 minutes before race, and we would jump jacks or in my, you know, plyometric movements and whatnot to get my full body warm. I pull my coin from time to time with breaststroke, and that, that just, just means I can be out for two weeks with that. Making sure the ride is properly warmed up, you're going to be more explosive as an into the race. So when I get in the pool, it's like a shot, and I'm already going slower. Um, I think that's helped me a lot. As with all strokes, there's no one size fits all as far as technique goes. Olympians like Adam Petey focus on having a short and narrow kick that gets their stroke rate up, while other swimmers like Chinese world champion breaststroker Chin focuses on having a much longer and powerful kick and glide. But Ben's stroke isn't either of those. In fact, it's much different. Here's what Ben had to say about the mechanics of his breaststroke and how you can replicate success in your own way. I think in terms of, of stroke mechanics and things that might make my stroke different, I, over the years, it's changed for me, but at this point in my career, I feel like I have a more arm-dominated stroke. I know it's styles, my pole is what, what got me into vitals. So it's through semis, through prelim semis and vinyls, uh, but the pull of my stroke and the snap motion is where I get a lot of power. I'm working on the kick. Some people have very powerful kicks. I'm working on getting arm bowl in my kick so I can reach the positions to get more power out of it. But I pull and the snap has been something that I, I've worked a great deal on. And so I have a lot of leverage when I pull outward in the Alice meet and I just start churning that sapping motion. 
that's helped me a lot. For me, I know that when I started getting a lot faster for the grow to 100, my 200 started to drop because I probably put on a little bit too much muscle. So um, there's different fluctuations for how much muscle you should have on your body, especially as you're into college. So everyone tends to put on a good bit of muscle when they're into college. Uh, and so for me, you know, wall four sat for my 200 a bit, my 100 got a lot faster than where it was. Um, at high school, so. Ben has some very innovative methods of training that you don't often hear about that he learned from his college coaches and fellow elite breaststrokers. Here's Ben's favorite tips and drills that will help elevate your breaststroke to the next level for all swimmers. Uh, one of the things that's, that helped me a lot, I uh, was focusing on the undulation of the breaststroke. And I found that the best drill you got at least two decks to one fall. I find that I'm trying to understand the undulation in your breaststroke is really the key to you dropping enormous amounts of time and getting the full body taste in of your throat. Um, especially for long course where it's a wall funding. You really don't tap. You, you can't rely on full out with all things like that. It's to the stroke. And to be honest, I'm still working on a lot of the terms and odds and things like that. But stroke is really work or I specialize. So um, when you do two kicks one pole or, or so let's three kicks underwater, I find that you don't have that same pull of surface tension when you're trying to focus congelating it. Um, so when you're underwater, you're able to get a pull focus and sit in that roll of like water into the stroke. So you kind of use your hands as you're thicking. Pull the inward, mass here, you lurch forward and into the drive. And you can feel it if you're tailbone and your hips to your floor as you start to surge forward. That's called be a great deal where you're like, well, I got lost my stroke. That really helps you put things uh, back to perspective. Another one that's been super helpful is rest your arms at Belvin Pick. Personally, some coaches like to have three dolphin picks or two dolphin picks. I like to just do one. So at the top of the stroke, I'm slamming, slamming, or slamming. It helps me get my stroke tempo out without over churning. Um, I think that's the super helpful. Another thing too, I've noticed but like the clinics that I do and you know, so axes that I watch, then students around the area. A lot of British workers from that job, I mean, their head egg to their stroke, your chest is so out like the drive to your chest into that stroke is what helps finish the extension and the full body wall. And so if your head's like this, the entire uh, person of British like this, you're losing that, your hips are still sinking in the water. And that was one of the biggest things my coach worked with me on, like Kevin Swander, Verba Fane. Um, in South Carolina, that's getting my head down. So at first, like, the two or three months I was there, I had to solo a tennis ball. I gave this all workouts with a tennis ball. This is going to be your new best friend. I felt like that. But it helped my breaststroke a great deal. So I um, I ended up dropping it a huge amount of time while I was in South Carolina. Um, did my 100, my 200 rests. Uh, but one of the things that, that helped me a lot with that was just making sure my head was down. All through college, I like to see breaststroke by this. And I would ever get the full extension of my stroke, the extra line, and for efficiency, and the extra power. We do it. It doesn't really matter. Some people's natural position is, is more upright when you get to the top of the stroke, but it should never be here. So they're going to help you. You got to get that big thing to it. And it's going to give you the leverage they should pull out. So as you get older, bigger, stronger, you're going to get bigger lap analysis and think of like that. That's going to give you more leverage to break in. And if you're here, you can't age those same muscles. You're going to be sinking. So that's what's helped me a huge trade deal. I think pick mobility is really important. that we can sure your hips are mobile and making sure they're very much warmed up for practice. Um, making sure the groin is fully activated and all the other auxiliary muscle groups around the groin is a learning curve that I have had to learn post-retirement and then re-entering the sport. Um, I think, especially as you get older and for the master's crowd and, and that age group, um, the coin is something that just needs to be the front and center of warm up. That's like my full warm up right now. It's like, I need to get my heart rate up and all these other things. I know when I was a full time pro, um, at South Carolina, there was like a, just a general warm up I did make sure my heart rate's up and everything. Now being a little bit older at 27, it's like, I gotta make sure that my coin is fully warmed up. It's like, call my coin. That's a huge, that's a huge mess. So, uh, making sure everything's mobile so I can get the most leverage out of my kick and the most power out of my kick. Does that start with ankle flexibility as well? Or do you do any ankle flexibility stretches? I, I do some ankle flexibility stretches. I think I think a lot of it starts in the hips though, making sure that the hips are loose so you can start to get more leverage into the ankles. I know like now with PT I'm working with right now, I'm starting to do sitting on my, sitting on my, uh, that's my foot sitting on, kind of lying down on the ground, like with my feet pointed that way. 
Not sure if that's super helpful, but I'll do that to kind of get a little bit more flex into it. I don't like to play with the lying on the ground with my feet out like that, sitting on the ground. I I feel like there's potential risk for getting a little too aggressive with that, how tight I am, so I don't like with that one. These are just some examples of things that help me. I think, you know, working on them for yourself and finding your own flow with things. For lying under code, well, it's after I'd be a cohesive partnership there. Um, your foot definitely helped you a lot. What I haven't told you about yet is that Ben didn't go his best times while swimming in college. In fact, he did them while working a full-time job. You heard me right. Ben manages to still work a full-time job while getting in two practices a day. In fact, he broke the master's national record last year in the 100 breaststroke at age 27, proving that you can still teach an old dog new tricks. With the Olympic trials on the horizon, here's Ben's advice for anyone looking to continue swimming post-college career and what to expect out of Ben at the Olympic trials after making the A final in 2021. Training and working is definitely a challenge. Um, I'm a full-time territory manager at a, a very large farm suit company. And so uh, I wake up very early before work and I get my lifts, swims or CrossFit in. Um, and then, you know, I'm on the phone and start traveling the rest of the day. And then at night, I'll get my other workout in. And, and it's definitely, it's some days it's a challenge, but other days it's exciting because I might have a bad workout and then that might make people hungry for, for work that day or vice versa. And so I think, you know, especially like balancing, you know, going back to like college or something like that, finding ways to balance different walls um, is is something that's like definitely, you know, prepared me for this. What, um, you know, I'm incredibly thankful to the company I work at at Nepron. Um, you know, they do, they do wonders for, for the world of pharmacies. And so, um, you know, excited to be a you know, part of their team. I absolutely love the, the best part of my career was training in South Carolina with that from the world. And then for people that I was with was the best experience I've ever had in my life. And COVID training just really made that a lot more difficult with, you know, inconsistencies with practice, pool time, things like that. So I wasn't enjoying swimming leading up to trials. And so I'm really happy that I'm, you know, enjoying swimming now, um, you know, with the team at the Olympic club, they've been super gracious and speaking around people, like-minded people, it's been really cool. You know, that's been, I, I think really, really good to me and, and closing out on a, on a high note, uh, just loving the sporting end. Cause I, I love the people I was around then, but I, I just really didn't like, uh, going through COVID training and the inconsistencies made it, made it difficult to, to, I think be everyone's best. And so. Uh, I'm excited for what trials holds this year. A big shout out to Ben for coming on and sharing his expert level breaststroke tips. I made a similar video with Bjorn Seeliger of Cal talking about freestyle tips. If you haven't seen it already, make sure to go check it out. But what do you guys want to hear about next? Comment down below what swimming tips you want to hear about and I'll make sure to go find the most elite swimmers to share their tips with you. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future swimming tips. And with that, I'll see you all next week.